is up y'all we are finally back with another one time for a little update on project eb7 now time to catch y'all up to speed we got this for $200 off the marketplace but it does have an error 24 on the display hopefully somebody out there does watch this video and maybe they can fix their error 24 or just their whole sensor symptoms in general so without further ado let's slide right into this one so now that she's finally sitting pretty now it's time to take the wheel off We got our ratchet and pliers for the rear M12 nuts. And now we just gotta take those off. And then we gotta do our brake calipers and then this wheel should pop right out. This nut and washer has definitely seen some better days, but we're just gonna reuse this anyways. Not like we have a replacement for them. Now it's time for the rear brake calipers. It's just these two little bolts and then this should slide free. I did take out the brake pads off camera. It's just a little tab and then you just slide the brake pads out. Very easy, very simple. Now, in some cases, this wheel may be stuck in there. That's only because the axle might be spun. So just give it a little hit with a hammer or your knee in this case, and it should drop free. The time is now y'all. So normally, if you have an error 24 on your display, all that means is that something's not connecting via the harness pins. So maybe you put them in the wrong way or something came loose along the way. Just make sure you follow the error orientations on the harness and that should fix your issue. If not, then you're most likely gonna have to take apart the hub motor. Here on this PCB board, you have your six hall lines. You can test these ends directly to the pins to see if you have continuity in your wires. If you don't, there's your problem. Now, since we're too dumb to use a multimeter, we're just gonna use one of these bike testers from China. And then we'll be able to pull the rotor off. Next, we gotta pull the rotor off and away from the stator using our gear puller. And yes, you would absolutely 100% need a gear puller for this job. These magnets are big tough, so you absolutely don't need one of these. The one we have is eight inches. These magnets can connect at the blink of an eye, so again, be very careful. Here is the rotor with the magnets inside. Honestly, it looks really clean. Even the bearing is super smooth on the inside as well. And the stator has minimal rust. That's kind of normal. Um, everything looks very clean. This is a good sign.
tall sensors on this motor are the three pin blue sensors you see if you look close enough. We got four on this board, but we're only gonna be focusing on three because I think one of them is just a speed sensor. I think. Since we know what sensor went bad, we're just gonna test it on the multimeter here. We can figure out the colors of the sensors by linking out the yellow hole wire to the actual sensors on the board. Whichever gives continuity is the corresponding color to the sensors, if that makes any sense. The other sensors were picking up voltages while the yellow one gave nothing on the signal line. This was the abnormality and it also verified our issue. Now that we know what sensor to replace, we just need to order the replacement part and hot swap it out. So now we just have to remove the old sensor. We do have a punch tool here that we're going to gently tap it out. Now that it's removed, we're just going to desolder the original pin. And this is what the old sensor looked like. Now, unfortunately, I did not record putting in the new sensor, but I did take photos of it and this is what it looked like. So putting this back together, we're just going to use some basic lithium grease. Normally you would want to go for something like Mobile 28, but we're just going to use some uh, multi-purpose lithium grease here. That should get the job done. Uh, we're going to use that on the clutch and the rotor and the inside of the housing. And that should be just enough. All right, now that we have the motor back together, now we should see three lights light up on the bike tester here. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and call this an absolute success. Now, the only thing left to do is throw this back onto the bike and give it a go.